G'day. This little short screencast will be a discussion about the Camera Raw processor and how to best utilize it for processing any images that you choose to open via uh, Bridge or Photoshop. As I've said in previous uh, lectures and classes, right clicking or command control clicking in uh, Apple on the Apple in Bridge allows you to open any file in Camera Raw, uh, whether it's a raw file or not. This is a, a raw file that I've shot. You can see here down the bottom uh, of the nut file name here. It ends in .crt, which stands for Canon Raw 2. Uh, so it's it is a raw file, but you can do the same with the JPEG, and there are certain advantages to that, as you'll see in a moment. This is the initial exposure that uh, shot that I took. Uh, and uh, the metadata would give me more information about the uh, actual exposure details that I used in this situation but I can tell just by looking at it that it seems to be a little bit bright uh, and not uh, to my liking at all. Um, so I'm going to change it, I'm going to uh, change it in the raw processor and I'm going to use a variety of tools to do that. Of course the basic tool set across the top here consists of a zoom tool. You'll find this in pretty much every software application you use. Zoom tools tend to look like magnifying tools and these things called hand tools are for moving around when you zoom in uh, on, an, on an image. Uh, then we have a white balance tool which enables me to pick an area on an image that I you want to use as white balance. I tend to rely more on uh, the degrees Kelvin setting and the daylight presets over here on the right. One of the advantages of shooting in RAW is that uh, I will be given these options to choose daylight, cloudy, shade, tungsten, fluorescent, flash, cut or custom, whereas a JPEG will probably only give you uh, as shot and um, a couple, one or two other options. That I can't remember what they are exactly off the top of my head. The next tool, the most important tool, is the color sampler tool. And you'll use this to measure an image to determine whether or not uh, the image is too dark or too light. And I always take at least three readings. One in the highlight area here. Here's my number one reading. This appears to my eye to be the brightest area. Um, I've taken another reading here in the sky because it's a bright area that I want to try and rescue some detail in. But at the very least, uh, I will take a highlight reading here, a, a middle value reading here. This is actually number four. And a shadow reading down here. I'll possibly even take an extra one in, in these shadows right deep in here in amongst uh, the um, foliage and uh, I've just discovered that uh, nine is the maximum number of samples that I can read so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move number seven over to there because I consider that more important I'm, that mid-tone value up here on four I might move this nine one around we'll see how things go so I can see uh, now where the numbers fall numerically, I can free, by freehand just move the tool around and over here on the right my RGB values are read out to me instantly. Um, but I like to use this colour sampler tool to take a variety of readings and get a feel for how the image is going. Uh, uh, this is a targeted adjustment tool which I've never used so I'm not quite sure what it does. Uh, then there's a, a crop tool and a straighten tool. Uh, a big no-no in photography, particularly in landscape photography, is uh, crooked horizons. Unless you are, uh, it's part of the idea behind the body of work, try to keep your horizons as level as possible. When you're dealing with images such as this, which have a formal aspect in terms of line and form, uh, it's, it's absolutely imperative that you, that you keep things level, which I have done in shot, so I don't need to use that tool. And... Um, a spot removal tool, uh, red eye removal tool, and a brush that allows adjustment. I've never used any of these tools and maybe I'll come back and do a screencast as I learn how to use them. There's a graduated filter tool here that looks quite interesting. And uh, the preferences dialog box would be handy if I wanted to make sure all files that I could possibly open in RAW could be. And a rotate tool counterclockwise and clockwise and a delete. Preview button here on the right and this toggles full screen mode and, um, and the uh, 
a normal working mode. So I might actually toggle to full screen mode so I don't get distracted by a bridge that's just sitting there in the background. And my number one reading here is at 255. Well, that's pure white with no detail, and I know this is a corrugated roof, so there should be some detail in there. Uh, reading number seven, way down here in the blacks, is sitting on 15 red, 10 green, and 6 blue. Uh, okay, so there's some information in there that I can work with if I need to at a later date. And my number four reading I would expect to be around the 175 mark. Well, it's roughly in the right region. So the main area for concern for me is the highlights at this particular moment in time. So I'm going to do my best to recover those highlights. I've already changed, uh, before I started the screencast, changed from um, as shot to daylight. There's, there it is in as shot. You can't see much there at all. When I go to daylight, uh, well, it helps if I turn on the preview, of course. Uh, that shows something else that I've done, so I won't do that. Um, so at, by default, it opens as a shot. I'm, I'm working with daylight. So given that the highlights are too high, I have um, pulled back all uh, pulled out the exposure, quite a substantial amount here, minus 1.5, and I'm going to assume that's EVs, I could be wrong, and I'll, I can explain what EVs is in a class if anyone's interested. I've uh, turned up the fill light, uh, dropped back the blacks, and um, that's about the only slider. I've added a little bit of clarity to the image as well. So you can see the difference, as soon as I turn on the preview, you can see there's a huge difference there in the appearance of the image in, in terms of its contrast, uh, in terms of its density, uh, the tonal values are much separated, it's uh, much more obviously uh, well lit, a well lit image. So I'm much happier with those settings turned on. And um, as you see, when I turn on the preview, the values change. I'll turn, the, turn off the preview, then the values change. Well, I pull down the highlights down to 251, and um, uh, my adjustments to the shadows, here we are. I've opened, uh, add, uh, added a little more detail to those shadows at number seven. Number three, which should be almost close to white, is nowhere near it, so I'm gonna to have to do some work in Photoshop to fix that. I'm just using these tools at a global level. This brush here, I assume, would allow me to do some uh, adjusting at a, at, a, at a local level, but I'm pretty happy with that. So, as you can see, Taking a reading first, adjusting the appropriate sliders uh, produces a much nicer image to my mind, which is much closer to the way I saw the image originally with lots of subtle tonality and that beautiful afternoon sweeping light sweeping across the image, bringing out all this texture and detail in the image itself. So uh, I'm now going to click open image and uh, hopefully this little tutorial uh, Photoshop will now open bridge will take a deep breath in the background and while we're waiting for Photoshop to open there we go as I said measure the image first don't trust your eyes or the screen the screens at Victoria University are not calibrated so uh, you aren't 100 percent guaranteed to get an, an identical looking image from screen to screen uh, use the number system that I've talked about to measure uh, your image, then make some uh, valuable guesses about that image. And there it is. The image is now open. Of course, the next step is to go File, Save As, and I will save it in my 2010 folder, VU, Teaching Aids, and Example Images, and I'll call this a high point. I'll leave the number intact. It helps me keep track of things. So there we are, I'm turning on Macintosh thumbnail and icon. I'm going to embed this color profile. This may never go beyond a screen image, we'll see what happens. So I'll now click save. There it is, um, we're all finished. So that's how you utilize your raw processor to process your work.